The Backrooms lore is home to numerous things. There's levels, there's creatures and entities that want to eat your face, there's different phenomenon, there's different effects, and most importantly, there are food and drinks. These consumable items oftentimes are the difference in life and death while you explore the infinite hellscape that we know and love. So today in this video, I want to create several of the popular Backrooms food and drinks in real life with real ingredients and put them to the test to see if they're even good enough to eat or drink for sustenance or if I would just simply rather get eaten by a smile. I want to rank them on a scale of 1 to 10. I want to show you how to make them and it's going to be fun. If you want me to make more food from the back rooms in real life, leave a like. I'd like to make this a series. Unless it flops, then I probably won't. Anyways, without further ado, let's get to the kitchen and let's cook up some back rooms food in real life and see if it's any good. Almond water is by far the most well-known item in the Backrooms lore, and it is very integral to pretty much everything. Wanderers gotta consume it for hydration and to keep their sanity in check, and it can also be used to heal small wounds and things of that nature. On the Wikidot, almond water is described as having trace amounts of sugar and sodium inside its makeup, and it also tastes slightly sweet, with a hint of almond flavoring. Easy enough. Let me show you how I am going to make this in real life. So many of you know there used to be a real brand of almond water. It was called Victoria's Kitchen, and they actually sold the stuff online. It's now unavailable, though, and even though it was on Shark Tank, Victoria's Kitchen went out of business, and it flopped. So you can't really buy it, and since that is the case, I'll have to make my own using the following ingredients. Almonds, some kind of sugar, I'm going to use syrup, vanilla extract, and water as well as a straining milk cloth or cheesecloth. To start, you're going to want to take one cup of almonds and put that in a big old bowl of water. Make sure the water covers them up for full soakage <laughs> and leave them in that water to soften overnight while you sleep. When you wake up the next morning, those almonds are going to be soaked and they're going to be perfect to blend up. After this, grab your blender, put the soggy almonds into it, along with four cups of fresh cold water, turn on that blender and absolutely pulse that mixture on high for two minutes or so. Once that happens, take out a big bowl, put a cheesecloth over it, and pour in the mixture to get all the almond chunks out of it, and just leave the almond water refuse behind. Once you have this bowl of almond water liquid, you need to put your sugar and flavorings in. For this one, I'm just gonna use vanilla extract and maple syrup to give it a nice little flavor. Mix it all together as best you can and refrigerate until cold. For a couple hours, I'd recommend. After that two hours is up and your bowl of almond water is chilled, bring it out of the fridge, grab two glasses, pour one full of the almond mixture and pour another full of water. At this point, take the full water glass and then pour your desired amount of almond mixture into that water until you get the flavor, the consistency, and the visibility of what you want. If you add more of the almond to the water, it'll become less clear and less watery like. So I recommend adding about two tablespoons to a glass of water and it'll still give you that really almond taste that you want. As the Wikidot describes, it's got that sweet and salty kind of last note taste. That's exactly what this has. So let's taste it. I'm pretty excited with this because I feel like I've nailed, nailed the coloring, the flavorings and everything. So the little bit of mineral water added to the almond mixture we just made. Without further ado, let's taste test it. Mmm. Refreshing for sure. Probably could have put a little bit more maybe actual sugar and not maple syrup in it. Maybe a little more vanilla, but this is the first time I've made it, so it's not gonna be perfect. It does have that really light almondy taste, which I like. That's like it's very nice tasting. It is refreshing. And it's not like drinking water refreshing, it's kind of like drinking Gatorade refreshing. Okay. Yeah, if I was stuck in like uh level 12 or something. I found some of this. I drink it, bro. This is good. Mm. Yeah, for sure. Also, sorry about my mustache. It's, it's all hassle. But yeah, this is this is good. Uh, seven and a half out of ten, I think. And if I could perfect the recipe, probably eight and a half or nine. A little more flavoring. I could have added more sugar because uh, I'm a sweet tooth and I'm American. But as of right now, y'all, that right there is some good almond water. And uh, I think I recommend this to anybody who wants to make it. So yeah, almond water is pretty good. I think it would actually be pretty refreshing on a journey through the back rooms, but I definitely would want some food, not just liquid, right? 
So next up, I want to move away from the liquid and onto something I can chew on. Royal rations. These are also a very hot commodity in the backrooms lore, and they're actually regarded by most as the best food item to find while exploring the liminal hellscape we all hate and love. Royal rations are supposedly meal replacement gelatin bricks that can give a person full sustenance and full caloric intake off just a bite of it. They're described on the wikidot as white edible gelatin, and the people that have eaten them say they taste mildly sweet and delectable. So we have sweet white gelatin bricks. I, I think we can do it. So the closest real life thing that I'm aware of that sounds like sweet white gelatin bricks is panna cotta, which is an Italian gelatin dessert for those that don't know. So I'll be basing this royal ration recipe off of that with a few small tweaks to make it uniquely like a royal ration. What you'll need to make your own rations is one fourth cup of cold water or milk, one and one quarter tablespoons of unflavored powdered gelatin, three cups of heavy cream, and a quarter cup of sugar, as well as one teaspoon of vanilla extract and a tiny bit of salt. So first, you're going to want to put this water in a small bowl and sprinkle the gelatin powder on the surface of the water without mixing it in, and let it sit there and bloom for six minutes so the gelatin does its thing. While that's doing that, grab a pan and pour the cream, sugar, and vanilla extract inside of it, mix it all up, and bring that mixture to a boil to dissolve the sugar. Yes, this is a lot more work than the almond water stuff, but trust me, it's gonna be worth it. Once it starts to boil and the sugar is dissolved, take it off the heat, stir the gelatin into the water mix, and pour that mix into the heated cream sugar mixture until it's dissolved and smooth. Stir it continuously until it's all one white consistency. Once you've achieved this in your pan, Pour that cream into a mold or a dish of your choice. I'm using this one because it kind of looks like the Royal Rations brick. And stick in the fridge for a few hours until it sets up. After a few hours is up, here we have it. A homemade Royal Ration that hopefully has a slightly sweet and delectable taste, just like the Wikidot says. Okay, so we have a Royal Ration ready to go. This thing set up just like I wanted it to. This is a little bit thicker than the actual picture on the Wikidot, but... I'm hoping it has the mildly sweet kind of desserty taste almost. It certainly feels like it's gonna be perfect. Uh, let's just dive right into it, shall we? Oh yeah. Look at that. Perfect. Oh yeah, definitely tastes like the description. Actually, a little bit sweeter. Mm-hmm. That's good. That is good. I probably could have got a little more firm a little bit more gelatin inside. It definitely has the, the jiggly, the uh, gelatin vibe, but could have been thicker. It's more pudding with a little bit of gelatin inside. It could have been a little bit better, but mm, has that sweet taste. Not too sweet though. Nice vanilla-y aftertaste. I personally like it. So you can see how it's really gelatin-y. This is a royal ration, guys. Mm, I'll probably rate that a six out of 10. It's more convenient to have something like this, you know, almond water to drink if you're gonna be in the back room. This is gonna be kind of weird to carry. Like we're using a store a gelatin mold like this. But yeah, that was a real life Royal Ration. So that's surprisingly two W's for this video. <laughs> almond water and Royal Rations, both bangers in real life. But I still got one more up my sleeve that uh, I think is gonna be even easier to make than both of these. Finally for this video, we're back to another liquid that's very popular in the back rooms. It's called Lucky O Milk. This is a common alternative to almond water because some people can't have nuts. And according to the backrooms wiki, Lucky O Milk is a drink made of soybeans, usually found in glass bottles, and it can come in a variety of different flavors. And that's pretty much the draw to it. It has all these different things it can be. Each different flavor has different effects in the lore. Like there's plain white Lucky O Milk, which is just like soy milk. There's strawberry, there's chocolate, there's banana, and all of these give you varying levels of luck or not luck. So to make this in real life, it's pretty easy. that Anybody can do this in like 10 seconds. All you'll need is just soy milk at its base. I'm using the Silk brand. And you'll need flavoring extracts to give it the flavors. I'm gonna use strawberry, banana, and chocolate, and then just plain. To make each one, just mix all those flavor extracts in, and there you have it. You have your very own Lucky O Milk. Although the real life version probably is not going to make you any luckier. Who knows? Hopefully it tastes good though. Lucky O milk. Chocolate, strawberry, banana. Not a big fan of soy milk. So this is going to be interesting to see how this even tastes. Let's start with um, the chocolate. Chocolate Lucky O milk. Nice little almond water alternative for those that are allergic to almonds. 
Let's, uh, let's put her down and see how it tastes. Tastes like chocolate milk. <laughs> mm. You can't go wrong. That's actually really good. The soy is like, it almost tastes like almond milk, but more earthy. It's not my favorite, but the, the flavoring covers it up. You can survive off that if you found some. Now on to the strawberry and watermelon flavor. That's very strong smelling. I think this might be my favorite though. I don't know, let's try it. Mmm. Wow, okay. Strawberry is amazing. This flavor and stuff is so good. Strawberry Lucky Home Milk, that is number one right now. That is amazing. Let's see if banana can top it. I love banana things. Thank you and uh, sink it down. Okay, it's definitely the worst of the three, but it's not bad. It's still not bad. Strawberry is the best. This, wow. Oh man, that is just delightful. Wow. Okay, so Lucky on Milk. I'm gonna give it as a concept, as, a, as an actual recipe, 8.5. These two are actually really good and it doesn't taste like just like milk. You can definitely taste the soy. As much as I don't even like soy, it's still really good. Recommend, this is better than almond water. If you're in the back rooms and you have the choice between Lucky O Milk and almond water, go for the Lucky O Milk, specifically strawberry. That is just fantastic, wow. So three for three in this video. Three things tasted good. I did not think all these would taste good, but uh, they did. So the back rooms, they got good cooks. That's all I'm saying. Almond water, Royal Rations, Lucky O Milk, all the recipes that I used will be in the description below. There was no recipes for me to base it off of, so I kind of just made them all up based off other recipes that I know. So uh, I hope you still enjoyed it. And like I said, if you want like a full back rooms cooking cookbook series, leave a like. I'd love to do that. This sounds so fun. And uh, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Thank you for watching until the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, like I said, leave a like and comment other stuff I should make and do in real life for the back rooms. There's tons of stuff I could do. I'm gonna go eat the rest of this royal ration. It was delicious. And while I do that, I'll see you later.